Okay, um, I want to talk about the um, A Warm Path by Eudora Welty first. So if you if you have that out, um, I'm gonna just review it because thankfully we already read these things and all we're doing is kind of rereading and taking any notes that you want to uh, for the test on these three short stories. Um, the first one is, is A Warm Path by Eudora Welty. Um, in A Warm Path, we have, um, I am going to go through the elements of story. Um, and the first one is, um, no, I'm just going to go through a quick narrative arc. Um, and we've, we've talked about narrative arcs before where you have kind of, you know, this, um, setting, rising action, falling action, uh, setting, rising action, climax, falling action, conclusion. Um, those are the five elements of, um, elements of plot and they're just basically observation, um, uh, elements. They're not like the deep dive into theme and characterization and tone and, you know, all of those things that I really want to talk about. They're just straight up observation, but there are five. Exposition, which is just setting, you know, just the beginning of the story where they give you the information and they kind of put you in the world they want you in. Rising action, where things start to happen and you start to see where the conflict, the main conflict is going to be. Most stories have several conflicts. Um, there's usually one main conflict. That's the rising action. Um, questions start being asked. You know, how is this going to turn out? The, con the climax is that point of um, where that question is answered um, and the highest point of tension. Climax is a little subjective. A lot of people interpret it differently. Literature is not like math. You know, where there's a straight up right answer, you get to kind of play around with it. Um, climax doesn't, but, but climax doesn't just mean exciting stuff. You know, like in Frankenstein, when he made his creature, that was exciting, but that wasn't the climax. Um, the climax occurs when he kills, the creature kills Elizabeth. Because we've been wondering the whole time, is he going to make good on his threat? And he does. And um, So you have exposition, rising action, climax. Falling action is where, after the climax, things fall out into wherever, wherever place they're going to fall out. And it doesn't mean that things are falling out well. They're just, it's where the writer wants it to go. And then however it ends up is the um, fifth element, which is conflict or resolution. You should be writing all this down. Um, and let me just do a worn path as an example of how to, you know, do this. And then you can imprint any story on um, that narrative arc, those five elements. Um, so, in a worn path, um, it starts out. Um, I'm not going to read the end. You can read it. But um, if I asked for the exposition, the setting, um, exposition is just. How about you write this down? A literary device used to describe characters, setting, and any background or main event. It's just background information. In a worn path, the exposition would be that it is December, it's early morning, it's a rural area. Um, there's a black woman named Phoenix Jackson on a path, and um, she's small and old. Um, uh, the detail about her apron made of, of, of sugar sacks lets you know she's poor, um, and she is traveling in the woods. She talks to nature and um, talks to herself. She's, rec rec she's uh, cognizant of the dangers in nature. Um, she uses her cane, which is really kind of ineffectual weapon against any of these dangers. And, um, and then things start to happen. And now we're in rising action and we're headed up that narrative arc. She starts up a hill. Um, she says, I feel like there are chains around my feet every time I start this, but then she gets to the top of the hill and she kind of looks back in triumph, like, I did it again. And, um, her skirt gets caught. Um, these are the obstacles she begins to overcome. We have no idea why she's on this path at this point. Um, the bridge, she reaches this log that's just laid, you know, lay, that, that, that is laid over um, water, and she says, now comes the trial. This is, this is 
scary part. This is a part where she could fall, where she could break a bone, and and she has to um, cross this every time. Um, she dreams or has a hallucination of a boy, a little boy bringing her cake, um, and you're just like, what is going on? But um, as things come together, you're um, you're seeing her hunger probably, and also her um, just deep desire that someone would take care of her. And then the irony that it's a little boy who actually she's gonna wind up taking care of. Um, there's a barbed wire fence. Um, uh, and things get a little darker then. You know, she talks about animals and stuff and two-headed snakes and this part, you know, she says that one time, that two-headed snake, he kept me busy for, for a long time. And you're like, man, that wasn't a snake that just slithered away and let her pass. That was a snake that held its ground and she had to, she held her ground too. Like, so you start to see that she's not just on a walk, you know, that, that she's, in, she's um, intent. Um, and then, then things turn a little dark as we continue up this narrative arc on Rising Action. She thinks she sees a, what she calls a ghost. She sees something that is hanging and, and, and black and kind of waving in the wind. And um, she says to herself, she calls it a ghost, and then she says uh, something like, um, I hadn't heard of a death nearby. And you, you know, we in our, we don't understand that context, but in, in that, in that uh, time, a lynching would have been very normal. And she thinks she's seeing um, someone that has been hung, um, a black man that's been hung, and she's not particularly surprised by it but she's scared and not wanting it to, that to be it um, and she does a little dance with the scarecrow and she realizes it's just a scarecrow and then she comes to um, place with a well and has a drink and then she's surprised by this dog and falls into a ditch and then she just sits there and she kind of waits and she's just like you know she doesn't try to climb out she just sits there and thinks about the dog at the top and then the incident with the white man um, takes up quite a bit of the story, quite a bit of her ordeal. Um, he is a hunter and he, you know, he's a complex character because he laughs when he sees her, which is kind of odd, he calls her granny, pulls her out, and you okay now? And you're like, feeling, you're feeling nervous because of the story, but you're really glad he's come along. Um, and he starts to ask her questions, which in our reading of it is like he's making conversation, right? Um, but what we're really meant to see is that he's interrogating her. Um, he's a young man and he's interrogating one of his, an, you know, an elderly woman who he should, to whom he should show respect. But um, he dismisses any reason that she would be out walking as though um, there's no good reason she would have for doing that. He can't, he says, you know, um, I wouldn't even walk this far and I have important things to do. Like he just dismisses um, any reason she might be out, says too far and um, so it tells her to go home. And we're meant to start to not like him right here. like. You'll notice she, and we talked about this in class, I think she doesn't ask him any questions. The whole conversation is, I will ask and I will, I will control this. And, and even though he is, you know, I picture him like 20 or even 40, like he's, he's, he hasn't, he doesn't have any right to do this. And yet at that time, every white person had the right to interrogate um, a black man or woman or child. Um, he tells her to go home. He makes fun of the reasons that she might be going to the city. He even suggests that, you know, colored people just want to go see Santa Claus. That's a direct quote, you know. Um, and then she sees a nickel fall out of his pocket. And she plays a little trick on him and takes advantage of what she sees as pride and um, competition in him. And starts talking about how that dog that had knocked her into the ditch could definitely beat up his dog. And he's such a um whatever he's so um you know easily pricked that he 
he says, you know, I'll, I'll show you which dog is, you know, is stronger. And so he runs off to have the little dog fight and um, she picks up a nickel and and when he comes and he comes back, she has it in her pocket, and um, and then he has this strange. He he lowers his gun at her, and um, and you're pretty sure now that this is a bad guy. You know that he he mocks her with his power, um, scaring her just for fun, and um, says, "Well, if I had any money, I'd give it to you." And of course, he's lying too. Um, because she just saw Nickel and took it um, and says, you go home and you'll stay out of trouble. Um, she doesn't feel good about her stealing. She says, you know, she expects God is watching all the time. And, um, and then she just, suddenly she comes into the city. Like, we don't, you know, know what she's doing the whole time, but she gets there. This is the climax of the story. She's overcome every obstacle, you know, including kind of being left to perish in a ditch and being shot. She gets to where she's going, and that is where um, the question is answered. And then sometimes that's how you can find the climax of a story, is where is the main question answered? Um, is she going to get, you know, to her destination? Yes, she does. She reaches the city, and she's like... She says, here I be, you know, she just, okay, so, I have to change phones. Um, so, while I was changing phones, of course, I did a poster for you of the narrative arc, some teachers call it elements of plot, exposition, rising action. We are here at climax in a worn path. She's just come into the city and that is, kind of the question that you've been answering. Um, you know, we have fought, like what happens? And the fact that all the answers are given, like the fact that we learn why she's going is after the conflict, at com climax is okay. Um, it's all gonna fall out fast. But um, the falling action is, um, if the climax is the highest point of tension or where the main question is answered, test questions, right? Writing this down. The falling action is where the main parts of the story resolve. The main parts of the story resolve after the climax. The events fall out. So the events that are falling out is just an explanation of why she's there. She um, reaches a building that um, we're seeing it through her eyes. The building has the plaque, um, and uh, we're to understand that's a clinic or a hospital. She's exhausted and disoriented and nearly catatonic, like she can't speak for a long time. And the um, the administration gets really annoyed with her, um, but then a nurse recognizes her, and then we have this big revelation of why she's there, why she's made this trip at all. Um, you know, persevering through all that stuff, not just taking a walk. Um, it's for her grandson. Um, I'm given just a little more information here and, she, and, and that she makes this trip often. There's one nurse that says that she, she makes this trip, trip a lot. She lives off in Natchez Trace. Um, Phoenix, at this point, while they are talking about her, still unable to speak. They're asking her questions. They reveal a little bit more about her journey, something about her grandson's throat. We're just like taking it in, taking it in, taking it in. Um, we're given a time frame, uh, like where we are in history when she refers to the surrender as she starts to speak, the surrender with a capital S meaning, um, the emancipation, um, of slaves. And so we're given where, when we are in the world and where we are in the world. And then we have the full revelation of why she's there. Her grandson, three years ago, she's been making this trip, uh, swallowed lie, um, and she's there for what she calls a soothing medicine. Um, when you uh, swallow lye, um, um, there's scarring along your um, esophagus and throat, esophagus and stomach usually. And it usually requires surgery. And um, 
because the scar tissue will swell often and they, uh, the patient can't breathe or swallow. And she gets what is probably a steroid um, to take inflammation down and she's been doing it for three years. So he probably did it when he was a toddler. Um, and he can't go with her. He's that, um, I mean, he's that infirm. Um, the nurses are blunt. They're, they're kind of like nice to her because she, they give her medicine for free and, but they're blunt and rude and they're hopeless about his case. Um, and, and they, and the, you know, wealthy juxtaposes that right next to Phoenix's three year journey. Um, uh, she's given a nickel begrudgingly, and she even kind of gets her pride back, or, uh, you know, her pride is still there, as she says, five pennies makes a nickel, you know, she's, she's not too, um, she doesn't mind asking for help, like when she asks women, you know, if you paragraphs are four to tie her shoes, that untied shoes are okay for the country, but in the city you need to tie her shoes, and she's not above asking for help, she just has no ego whatsoever, um, she'll take help, she'll take, she'll take that nickel, she'll tell you how much it is, um, and then she decides, she has this, you know, I know what I'll do, I'll buy a windmill, and I'll take it back to him, and he won't even believe there's stuff like that in the world. Okay, so... Exposition is setting, rising action, everything starts to take place when things start to happen, when the conflict is revealed. Climax, the highest point of tension, or when the main question is answered. Falling action, I just gave you a definition, where the main part of the story resolves after the climax, and then you have the resolution. Anything that just happens at the end, which is like the windmill and her making her way home, we don't know anything. Um, about her after that. Um, the, um, I want to make a couple more points and then I'm finished. Um, there are two literary references that you should know uh, Welty calls on as she writes this story. Her name, Phoenix, um, is probably from the um, ancient Greek mythology, the Phoenix. The bird, that long, you know, if you, ever, you guys ever studied Greek uh, myths, that long-lived bird that regenerates every, like, 500 years. Um, I, I'm just going to read this. Um, uh, if the phoenix obtains a new life by rising from the ashes, that, that reference, um, from its own self, its predecessor, which is its own self. Um, uh, some legends say it dies in its combustion of flames, and others say it simply dies and decomposes and is born again. Um, the phoenix symbolizes renewal in general, um, and you can see that, like, Welty named her character that on purpose. This, um, this life born out of of burning down. Every time she makes that trip, she burns herself down. This isn't just me walking up the street, you know. Um, she burns herself down to the point of exhaustion for three years in a row, and then she is reborn. And in addition to that, her grandson is reborn. Um, so there's the Phoenix reference. The other reference is from the, uh, the uh, Book of the Odyssey. And the story of Odysseus, who, um, um, it, it's Homer's Odyssey that tells the story of this great hero who fights his way for ten years to get back home and, and has to overcome a lot of obstacles like the sirens and, you know, those women that try to seduce him onto that island and the one-eyed cyclops and, um, descent into Hades and is he going to make it back home? And so those are the two literary references you should know that, um, from which Eudora Welty draws this story of Phoenix Jackson, the Phoenix and Odysseus. And then, um, I think that's all, I think I'm, I'm just going to end it there. That's a long, that's, um, that's long enough. Um, that'll be sufficient if you've read the story and if you watch this, 
and you can remember the five elements of plot or the five elements of a narrative arc um, and kind of imprint the story if I ask you to onto it, then um, that's a worn path. And we will do Lily Daw um, tomorrow. So keep up all week or you got to watch a lot of YouTubes on Friday morning. So anyway, see y'all later.